Fran, thank you very much for the uh, invitation here to Bath. I mean, this is some business you've got uh, here. I mean, whereabouts are you located? Tell our audience where we are in the world. Thanks. We're, we're happy to have you here, indeed, Paul. Uh, we are now in between Ulm and the Lake of Constance, uh, uh, the very southern part of uh, Germany, uh, Swabian country, uh, it is called. Yeah. Um, glad to have you here. And it's a beautiful sunny day today and it is a fabulous area this is. Um, I'm here to explore some of the equipment that you've purchased in recent years from Abarmier, twin pallet machines and five axis machines. We'll talk about those uh, shortly. But I want to learn more a little bit about your business as well and what you do um, and, and what the current economy is like in Germany and, and you know, the challenges that you're facing. So tell us a little bit about Bar. Okay, so uh, Bart is a third generation family run business. So I am uh, the actual CEO together with my father of this company. Founder was my grandfather and uh, we are working together with uh, some of our family members here. Um, we are um, producing chips, yeah. Uh, customers send us uh, the drawings and uh, we do, do some uh, developments uh, on their parts, on the, on the processes as well. I like that. Um, let's go this way because what, what, one of the introductions, one of the machines you introduced into the company not so long ago is this Abamie twin pallet machine. Let's have a step up on here. Um, this is some bit of kit, isn't it? Why did you buy this one, Wolfram? And, and what's it doing? And what, what, what difference has it made to the company? So that's actually the biggest machine we shopped uh, all over the company history. Uh, the machine that is standing here. Uh, we decided to go for it because we wanted to uh, increase the parts diameter. So we are talking about, talking about parts uh, going uh, up to 2.4 meters. These are still transportable in our area. This is important. We are off highway here uh, at, at this location. And uh, we, we needed a machine that is able uh, to complete uh, the parts in maximum two steps. Okay, so you can turn on this as well as mill. You've got obviously a universal head on there. Yes. So you can access the parts in a sort of a horizontal format as well as, as, well as a vertical and turn two. So that in my mind is multi-process, isn't it? Which is really where you begin to win with this type of equipment. Yeah, and uh, we're using all of this, the C-axis for turning, the B-axis on the head, everything is uh, uh, is in use and uh, on, on this pilot changer machine uh, we even try to um, um, switch the parts um, and the programs like doing the last part here and then put uh, the next part in the pilot changer in and uh, do, a, do another part then yeah so um, high mix small batch uh, is also something. Well let's have a look at this pallet system because this is where um, this is uh, this gives you your kind of unmanned lights out running I suppose does it or it, it enables the spindle to keep in operation all the time what you yep. have here in fact this is perfect setting here yeah so it's opening right now and it's bringing out some uh, titanium material over here so uh, we have the loading axis here uh, where the guys can clean everything and make sure um, the part is clamped nicely and uh, the position is uh, is good and then he can start and as soon as uh, the next part uh, is finished, the machine will change itself. And uh, What even... difference has this made to your company in terms of the output, the productivity gains, having this pallet system? Yeah, it was maximized a lot. So for some parts, uh, we, uh, we doubled the, the quantities uh, quite fast. Um, and for some other parts, the, the longer running parts, they will just run into the night shift and then uh, the early shift will uh, change the parts. Is there any challenges and risks with having sort of pallet systems? Is there any obstacles to overcome? Is there a, is it an education journey um, to go from a single table machine up to a pallet system? Or is it quite easy to just go, I've got the opportunity to run for longer now? It's quite easy for the, for the operator itself. Um, uh, like he's doing the same job than he does on the, the other machines. But for the programmer, uh, it's something he has to learn, yeah, uh, how to include that uh, pallet changer system and uh, to make sure there are no errors uh, for the weights and the balancing of the devices. That's something you need to learn, definitely. What, what, what on the machines, and we're going to have a look at two of the other machines in a minute that you've got from Abarmie, eh? but what about things like the, um, the spindle technology? I noticed you're machining some pretty sort of challenging materials, aren't you? These are not simple parts to, to manufacture. Did you go for kind of a high torque 
um, spindle, is that, is that what you've got on these machines? Uh, yes, uh, we were mainly driven by the 500 RPM on the C-axis. That was important for us yeah, to turn huge diameter and make sure the ceiling surfaces uh, will be good. Uh, but I'm talking about the actual spindle, that's machi the machining spindles from a milling perspective. Ah, okay, the Kessler spindle? Yeah. Yeah, it, it should be able uh, to uh, handle some, some big uh, mills. Yeah. As you can see, the part that was just going in, that big blade, yeah, it uh, has to be very flat and very even, so you need some uh, big mill. Big mill. Okay, I want to um, walk towards the to, 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 to the other machines. I mean, you, you've got a lot of different machines in here as well. I, mean, I noticed you've got sort of small twin pallet machining centers, you've got vertical lathes, you've even got sliding head technology here in the company. So it can't just be this um, sort of re renewables market that you're looking to get into. Do you do work in other sectors, small parts and stuff like that too? Yeah, sure, we're doing that too. Um, uh, actually, we are facing uh, really low market activities on the businesses that were driving us for the last 10, maybe 15 years. Yeah, So we have parts running, um, but it's a very low activity, so we focus a lot on uh, these, new, uh, these new markets uh, that we are... Um, what would they be? Medical sector maybe? Air Electronics, yeah. telecoms, or so um, machine construction was a big thing, and uh, we will um, ramp up uh, the medical part. So um, implants, uh, stuff, or adapters for uh, prosthesis uh, is an issue. We will uh, go uh, up to five percent uh, next year, and then increase it to uh, ten percent and above for medical. And uh, aeronautic is uh, also something that uh, will increase during uh, the next uh, three years. Um, so you will see more of these parts here. And, and the, when, when we talk about the automotive sector, we hear a lot in the UK and around the world about some of the things that have happened around Europe. But what's your opinion and why has that market faced such a significant downturn for Germany in the last decade or so? What's happened? Okay, so I see uh, mainly two reasons therefore. Yeah? First is, and uh, we have seen that, yeah, we felt it in our bones, yeah, the price pressure for the automotive parts uh, in between 2015 uh, and 2020 was, uh, went up to a crazy level. Yeah? It, it was just uh, impossible for us to earn money. Uh, and the other thing is uh, that maybe the automotive market changed a little. So there are, uh, the world is looking for uh, other things than just or only the most efficient diesel engine. Yeah, they want to have some entertainment in their cars, and that's what they're looking for. So maybe uh, the automotive uh, branch have to overthink uh, uh, its um, way of uh, selling cars. But you used to make a lot more parts in Germany than you do now. So that's all been shipped to the Far East or other countries to make some of the parts for the diesel engines and things like that. That's been a big impact as well. And of course, electric vehicles, less parts in an electric car than there is in a yes. diesel. So I guess all of these factors together yeah. have led to where, to where we're at. I agree on that. And, and, and with you changing and diversifying then, there's two more Abamia machines here. Um, what's the story behind these and what are they doing? And how impressed are you with what you've got from them? Well, we are very impressed. Uh, our journey began in 2016 uh, when we had a look on the, the first Abamia machine. And uh, this one is actually joining us since 2019, uh, doing some um, big uh, gearbox housings, yeah, not for car or, or truck, uh, for different like um, hydro, um, hydro fields uh, and quickly uh, switched uh, the quantity of uh, parts that we delivered into the renewables uh, was kind of uh, overwhelming us, so uh, we um, decided to get for another one. Uh, we were not uh, really sure about the diameter, so we went for the bigger THC22 machine that gives us the opportunity to machine really large parts as the swing diameter, diameter is above 2.6 meters. And um, so we can use them very flexible. Uh, and um, we try to have one of the THC16 machines uh, free for, for other machining parts where um, it is not important to have it running uh, all the time. Uh, what's your relationship like with these guys? Because I mean, I've been to Spain quite a lot. I've been to the Abamier uh, factory. 
obviously we know Inara and Coldo and Ignacio and all of the, all of the team. Um, you enjoy uh, working with them? Yeah, we enjoy it a lot. Like uh, on each level here in the company, all our guys, uh, you can see some quite warm invitation when they visit us and the other way around. And uh, um, I mean, they have to deal with some uh, serious uh, CNC issues. Uh, uh, they have to solve and uh, it's always on a very high on an expert level and uh, but, but we don't forget uh, that uh, working also has to be fun yeah and uh, that's something uh, we really appreciate yeah having dinner together and stuff is and, uh, really something and the technology that they offer in the in these machines i mean is that helped you get to the next level of where you are you know multi-purpose or, or multi-function machining multi-process machining allows you to be more I suppose sophisticated and give your customer a better product maybe or yeah. quicker are these all of the aspects that investing in equipment like this gives you yeah definitely so uh, reaching 30 microns of flatness on a diameter of 1.6 meter is something and uh, ibamia helped us uh, quite good uh, in uh, even even including uh, heidenhain in uh, writing some very complex uh, stuff in the computer uh, to, to reach this target and not reach it once, yeah, but reach it on a process stable level. And that gives you the edge as a company, does it? Is that, is that where you see your success? The fact that you're able to engineer parts and products for your customers using not just the machines, but your expertise as well. That's what comes out to me here. Yes, There's a definitely. few things we can't see because of these reasons, which just shows your skill sets. We have learned uh, how to be uh, best practice company in the uh, whilst uh, the, the years uh, when we delivered for the automotive sector. That was quite a good learning and now we transfer this knowledge into the next practice um, parts and uh, projects that we are doing. Uh, then uh, we, uh, we are into the development phase uh, and uh, afterwards uh, we want to have the serial production as well to have this as a best practice. Uh, what's the future for Bath? Uh, Wolfram, what, 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 what's going to happen in the next 12 months? Have you got any more of these coming in? Have you got any new projects that are happening? And uh, where do you see yourself in a year or two's time? Uh, so at this point, um, we have uh, two uh, main targets that we have to reach. So uh, we are, we are we're trying to expand the number of strategic partnerships uh, with our customers. And uh, then we want to bring uh, this business uh, to our plant site in uh, Timisoara. Uh, there are 2,800 square meters of brand new production facility uh, just waiting for these machines uh, to set up uh, this process uh, in our center of competence for production. As we see Binswangen, where we have access to tools, to the best machines and the best educated people um, as a center of uh, ramp up. Ah, so you're producing here and then you pick up the solution and you move it to another production facility. Yes. So you've, ah, oh, okay. We will always keep uh, some here, yeah. uh, but the production capacity in Timisoara is much higher than we have here in Minsvanon. So another one of these coming in, I believe. Same machine that's coming in. Uh, what, what model have you gone for now? Uh, it's kind of a mix in between both of the machines. Uh, so it will be a THC 16 machine with a pallet changer. Yeah, it will be uh, used for serial production. So. I guess we uh, have uh, at least maximum two parts running on these machines uh, for 24-7. And that's what you're running 24-7. Fabulous story. What a great place. Um, thank you very much, Wolfram, and, and good luck for the future. It's been a fascinating insight, not just into your business, but how the economy works here in Germany and uh, you know how businesses react to certain challenges that, that have been happening. So thank you very much for your time. Great to see you. Thanks. It was good to have you here. Thank you.